Hey! Okay, so we're going to talk about a person in history. This particular individual was actually recommended to me. So, yeah, let's just get right into it. Um, Florence Labatty. She was born in 1888 and passed away in 1917. She was actually Florence Russ, and she was born in New York. Um, after her dad died, at the age of three, she, her mom just couldn't deal with it, and so she was adopted, and her parents lived in Canada, so she moved there, and of course, the last name, Labatty. And I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> I really do. Now, here's the funny thing to me, is with a lot of what I was able to find, because actually, I had a hard time finding a lot about her. It seemed like she really couldn't step away from New York. <laughs> now, before I, I get further into this, one thing you have to understand is back at the turn of the century and, um, and into the Edwardian era is, of course, Hollywood was in its infancy. Now, we all know about talk shows where you have um, L.A. and New York. Well, it was a lot like that at the early stages of Hollywood. There were studios in New York, and there were also there was also, of course, um, Hollywood as it was <laughs> being built. <laughs> So um, just keep that in mind as we continue, because a lot of times we tend to forget that. <laughs> so her studies, she went to several New York schools, and again, it was like she just couldn't step away from New York. <laughs> and she also went to, I'm guessing it was called Convent of Notre Dame in Montreal. Those of you who are from Canada can, of course, correct me. I have no problem with that. Now, when she finished her studies, she received a job as a fashion model in New York City. <laughs> like I said, it's like she's just there. So in 1908, she went to New York and she received a part in a stage play. I couldn't find the stage play. I may have just missed it. Again, I will put all of the information that I found in the description box below, and maybe you guys find it. <laughs> and you can tell me, it's right there. <laughs> Did you miss it? <laughs> it's my life. Now, she went on tour uh, like a, with a road company, with the stage production and everything for a couple years, you know, touring different areas of the United States. And guess who she met up with? Mary Pickford, a fellow Canadian. <laughs> and um, Mary Pickford said, well, have you ever thought of a motion picture? The thing about Mary Pickford <laughs> is... I, I notice this a lot when I research a lot of other people, is when they meet Mary Pickford, that's like the first thing she says. So she, she was good at recruiting people. <laughs> she was good at it. So in 1909, granted, she was still on tour. Um, Florence was still on tour and everything. But she took a side trip to uh, this Biograph studio in Manhattan. So one of the... Uh, New York Studios for motion pictures and they invited her back later that year and uh, of all people she worked with the a lot of these people the, the Gish sisters worked with him that's where they got their start so um, so she did like little bit parts and everything and a lot of uncredited parts and uh, then her career in silent film really took off when she started with Thanhauser. Thanhauser was the most successful, from what I remember, one of the most successful studios in New York. I mean, they made like over a thousand films. 
in um of the motion picture next to the George Malez studio and George Malez had to <laughs> place a studio if you remember he had to place a studio in America so that <laughs> Thomas Edison would stop stealing his work <laughs> oh good lord so um and of course New York was the um right place to put it anyway um so in 1911 she is hired by Thanhauser and when she <laughs> she became the most prominent actress so she's like the star child for Thanhauser and um the superstar I guess would be the better phrasing for it yeah she was the superstar for Thanhauser and um I mean, in in two years, she made, like, it doesn't say exactly, but it says dozens. It, that's what it said, like, a, like dozens of films. So, and, you know, in that time, we don't think about it. You know, these days, we talk about how it takes billions, trillions of dollars to make a film. Well, back then, unless, <laughs> unless you look at, like, Lon Chaney's Phantom of the Opera and... <laughs> any of <laughs> Douglas Fairbanks' movies <laughs> and, and and the silent Ben Hur. <laughs> but but for the most part you think about okay they didn't have to put sound in any of these movies. And so I mean they were pumping out like three movies a week. And um so it really wasn't that much. And uh so <laughs> And of course there was, there's the whole inflation thing at the same time. So, <laughs> but even still, even with the whole inflation thing, the, the cost doesn't even come close to what it meant. Yeah. Anyway, I think you get the idea in the six years. So from 1911 to 1917, she made 166 films. <laughs> Uh, movie stars that that have made that many films in six years. I don't think so. I don't think so. These people were busy, busy little bees. <laughs> now, one of the films that they mentioned was a 1912 version of Jekyll and Hyde. So I have to backtrack on one thing that I said because. When I critiqued uh, Jekyll and Hyde with John Barrymore, I said that that was the first, I'm pretty sure that's what I said. So if I said it, then I am completely wrong. I was sure that that was the first, because I, I looked and I couldn't find. So um, I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm gonna look for this one and um, I will critique it, whether it's lost or not. So. <laughs> The other thing is that she performed her own stunts, and which is a massive deal breaker. Um, when <laughs> there were a lot of those gals that just to get the job, they would do their own stunts. Uh, Baby Peggy, who we sadly lost last year, and uh, I think she was 101 years old, but uh, <laughs> not so much a bit, but that's what her name was, of course. But uh, baby Peggy, she was of course a child. She was like seven, eight years old and she was expected to do her own stunts. She, when I was reading up on her and I'm going off track a little bit, but when there, she said that there were things that she did, like she had to run out of burning buildings and that sort of thing. And, and all of that. And I'm thinking you're a child. Why would they expect you to? Oh my gosh. So, yeah, Florence performed her own stunts, and when she was she appeared in the 1915 Real magazine, she it said that she was beautiful and talented. So, um, and not very often, at least that I have seen, she was a top billing actress. Now I've restored and colorized a lot of these stage actresses and the um 
silent film actresses and very rare especially in this time in the turn of the century in the edwardian pulling into the edwardian era do the actresses have top billing so this is big this is a big deal <laughs> so performing her own stunts and and all of that so so basically she's up there with Mary Pickford now you think because Mary Pickford was big during this time and uh so she's she's a big deal but she's over in New York and, and of course Mary's over in in California so she's she's the big deal in New York <laughs> now aside from you know outside of of the Hollywood, you know, outside of the, you know, studio, her friends would say that she, she loved piano. Now, this is during a time when art was a big deal. You, you think about, you know, this is Art Nouveau and all of this stuff and, and all of that. So, but I found it very interesting because I'm, I'm a musician myself and people would say that classical music was her favorite thing and she would play these classical pieces from memory and so I found that very interesting so not only is she talented in front of the camera but she's very talented away from it because they said that she loved art and and sculpture and, and painting well they didn't it didn't really elaborate like did she do these things I would love to think that she did because <laughs> Now, she was engaged twice. She was never married. Uh, the first one was Val Hush. I guess he did like small parts for Van Hauser, but he was also a Cadillac salesman. <laughs> and uh, I don't know why that, that makes me laugh. It, sh it shouldn't, you know. So, because if you're doing the small parts, you also need to <laughs> kind of like today YouTube shouldn't be your first priority <laughs> so so there you go but uh his yeah his name was Val Hush and uh he 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 was an actor for Thanhauser but it was like the background characters and everything and and again he was a Cadillac salesman there's no shame in that but uh Again, I don't know why. I guess it's because I remember when my grandparents had a Cadillac and it was one of those boat cars. <laughs> Maybe that's why. Oh, man. I always felt so far away from my grandparents. And so they'd be talking to me and I didn't think that they were. Anybody else have... Yeah, anyway. So maybe that's why. And, uh, but then they broke up and she started with uh, and then it became uh, Daniel Carson Goodman. Now Daniel Carson Goodman was a writer for Than Hauser and he wrote the Zudora series which they say serial and uh, which is with an S not with... <laughs> I don't know why I have to but um, which I'm interested in that Zudor. I tried looking it up and, and I couldn't find it anywhere, so maybe it's lost. I don't know. Maybe. And, uh, but yeah, so her, her second fiance was uh, Daniel Carson Goodman. He was a writer. He did this series. And uh, it didn't say that he was an actor in any way, so maybe he was just the writer. Now, during World War One, a lot of the other uh, actors and actresses would of course you I'm sure that you know a lot of you may have seen the uh with uh, Charlie Chaplin and and uh, Mary Pickford where they say go buy war bonds and and all of that and you of course see in New York where you have the huge crowds and they're on the platform and uh yeah and and Chaplin and and uh uh Douglas Fairbanks are are performing their little antics and it's all so that people will buy war bonds well, she didn't do that, you know. You have to understand that Canada was thrust into the war right away. And so a lot of her male friends immediately 
went off to war. And so she was receiving all of these letters and, and everything else and, and photographs showing the reality of war, you know, in the trenches and everything else. And, and, and it deeply affected her, of course. And so she's seeing these pictures. And so she travels around the world and she, she tells these people, she, she's telling people, this is the dangers of war, you know, <laughs> while everybody else is saying, bad war bonds, you know, no, she's showing the harsh reality of what it is. And, um, so that's, that's what she did. And, um, so that was how she took care of it, which <laughs> is a lot better than acting like everything's okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like they were, they were putting on a show. And, um, but when she has the actual, and she was showing the pictures in, in some way or another, I think it said that she had some way of showing it on a, showing these pictures on a screen and showing the audience, this is what's going on. These are what these soldiers are going through. Yeah. So she was showing the pictures that she was receiving and, um, and, and showing people that, that that's what's happening. Yeah. So. I think that's what I read. I'll have all of this in the in the description. All the because I couldn't find a lot about this this young lady, but um, I I will of course put all of that now. August twenty eighth, nineteen seventy. Now she's at the height of her career. Her career is exploding. <laughs> And she's doing very well. Now, the one thing to understand, like I said, she's like, I mean, Mary Picker, Pickford's like right here and she's like right here. Like I said, Mary's over in California and she's on the New York side. <laughs> and um, one thing to to understand is the Thanhauser Corporation, like it says here, I have it up here. Uh, the Thanhauser Corporation had been struggling since the 1914 automobile accident, uh, accidental death of Charles J. Height, who was an, a, a businessman and film producer. So her career was basically saving Thanhauser. I mean, if she had decided to leave Thanhauser or if she just wasn't a part of them anymore, Thanhauser would have dived once Charles passed away. So, so here's the thing is, um, In August of 1917, okay, the way this reads out, um, she says that she's going to leave Thanhauser um, because she has received um, offers from other corporations. And um, so since July of 1917. So in August, she, she drops the bombshell. Now on August 28th, she's with her fiance, um, Daniel Goodman, and the brakes fail on her vehicle. And it, it, it goes down a hill and it, it's overturned. Goodman escapes with a broken leg. She is thrown from the vehicle and suffers all different kinds of, you know, serious injuries, including a compound fracture of the pelvis. And, um, she, clung to life, you know, she, it, it was like 
possibly she was going to make it. And then she passed away on October 13th, 1917, of infection. She was the first female film star to die while her career was at its peak, which isn't really much of an achievement, as far as I'm concerned. And, um... You know, while I was reading all of this, nobody stopped to think foul play. <laughs> I mean, there was never any indication of that. I, never once. The, oh, it's just a tragic accident. I'm thinking, okay. Um, in in 1914, this this gentleman Charles he sadly passes away of of a of an accident, of an automobile accident, and um, she's the only reason that Thanhauser Corporation didn't fall apart and and go kaput. Then she says, "I'm leaving because of this." Her the brakes on her car fail after she says that. <laughs> nobody wants. No, nobody. Oh my gosh. Like I, I was looking. Like I said, there, there's not a lot on, on her. It, it it took a lot of digging to find um <laughs> and and I read it and I'm like red flags here <laughs> like like th this is a, a a Thelma Todd thing and and I really do want to talk about her I I really do but I I wanted to hold back on on her cuz I didn't want to yeah and um <laughs> But anyway, because there's a lot of YouTubers who talk about her, and uh, so I wanted to hold back. But um, just, oh my gosh, <laughs> are you serious? I mean, you 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 talk about it in the comments. I mean, uh, uh, am I crazy? This <laughs> this just screams to me that something foul went down but when i was reading stuff it was like uh <laughs> oh anyway i'm gonna move on from that <laughs> i've said my piece <laughs> so um there was a, a huge funeral for her because of course she was um at the height of her career and everything, a huge actress and everything. And, um, but the interesting thing was that she was buried in an unmarked grave. That, that was a little, <laughs> fortunately in 2014, the grandson of Thanhauser, uh, what was his name? Ned Thanhauser, sorry, <laughs> dyslexia. Uh, Ned Thanhauser, he was able to raise the money, and she has, um, she has one now, so, she has a headstone, so, and everything, but I would think at the time, there would have been one put there, I don't know, I, I wasn't there, so I don't know, <laughs> but, now, the other thing is that her birth mother, uh, Mrs. Russ, suddenly popped up and started, I, I guess, either she popped up or she was there at, she was buried there. There's something in here that I'm, I'm not... Yeah, it, it was just, there was something 
in that whole thing, and you can read it. I'm, of course, going to have it. So anyway, somewhere along the lines, it came out that she had been adopted somehow. And, well, she was only three, so I'm sure she wouldn't remember. But, yeah, it just, I don't know. It... Well, let me see here. Uh, the Let's see, the same secretary included by Mar Marie S. Russ in her legal proceedings days before her death with Marie Russ claiming to have been the actual birth mother and sworn deposition. Okay, so I think I get it now. I, I think I've got it. So days before she died, her mom is trying to get in. Now that this woman is a success and everything, she's trying to say, oh yeah, she's my, she's my daughter now. So she's trying to weasel her way back into this girl's life. And I get it now. I've got it. And uh, it, it also says that the obituary stated that um, she was survived by her mother, uh, Mrs. Labatty, with no mention of her having been adopted. Um, this would have been customary at the time. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, so the, Mrs. Russ was just trying to, yeah. Oh, she's famous now. I want to be part of her. Yeah, I've, that still happens today. Yeah, I got it now. I got it now. So, um, <laughs> I'm a good parent. <laughs> We've seen that enough times. So, anyway, this is Florence Labatty. Um, I had someone mention her to me, and I want to thank you for doing that. I, <laughs> I'm very saddened to hear how she passed away. That that's just too bad. And then for the mom, oh my gosh. But you know what? Just proves that some things never change. People just don't change. Oh, for heaven's sake! But um. I thoroughly enjoyed learning about this person, at, about Florence, and um, especially with what she did in World War One. While everybody else was, uh, while everybody else in Hollywood was like, buy war bonds and doing a um, a Hollywood act, she was actually showing the reality of it, and I can thoroughly appreciate her for doing that, and um, and everything else she did her own stunts. I will find her 1912 Jekyll and Hyde movie. <laughs> she proved me wrong. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely, you know, I don't mind being proven wrong and, and I thoroughly enjoy it. And, um, she did 166 films in, in, uh, six years and uh, between 1911 and 1917. I don't think there is an actor or actress today who can even do that. But there are a lot of those silent film stars in the Edwardian and even 1920s who, who did lots of those films. And I, I think Peggy Shannon was another one that I talked about that, that did that. But anyway, and, uh, and she was recruited by Mary Pickford, a, a fellow Canadian. <laughs> So anyway, yes, I, I have to thank you for telling me about Florence Labatty. I, um, I thoroughly enjoyed getting to know her, and um, I'm very saddened about how she passed away and everything. But anyway, if you ever want me to talk about somebody, um, don't hesitate to, to comment on anything or even message me on my social medias. I have no problem with that. I would love to learn more about these people. 